if I come here, my pants will rip. I fill them out well, as they say. That's too much, too much information, <laughs> Kirk. Too Sorry. much information. All right. Thank you. I'll tell you a first story. Your, your thoughts on getting this group that first step into the playoffs, first of all. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, obviously I'm proud of these guys. It's been a couple of years now that we've been uh, battling together, trying to get put a group together, fill in our holes, uh, grow in terms of our confidence uh, and just belief. Um, winning the games or getting results in games that we need to has been a big thing for us. We've had opportunities over the stretch to rec win games and take a big step forward, and sometimes we drop those. But in this last little stretch of games, we've been winning when we need to win, and tonight we got a result that we needed to get to get ourselves across the line, and that's, that's big. It's a mental thing sometimes. And, you know, uh, and as I just said to the guys, that we all signed up here to, to change the trajectory of this club because it's the, the best club in MLS, and but it's been struggling for a number of years. And all of us signing up here with the responsibility to turn this club back into the greatest club in, in the league. And so we took one step towards that tonight. It's a small step to get ourselves into the playoffs. Now it's, now it's to go to Houston and play like Houston is a playoff game so that we can be, be ready. There's no, I said, no, no letting off in Houston. We've got to go and play with the right intensity and speed because we're going to be in it before we know it. So, uh, but just really proud of the group to, uh, to battle, even to come from behind uh, in a situation that was maybe a little frustrating for the guys, missing another penalty kick that's been a struggle for us this year, um, then giving up a goal, but then fighting our way back into it. So. At least a couple of weeks ago, you said this group sort of struggled with emotions, I believe what, what you said. Have you seen them sort of handle that over this last 10-game stretch here? Yeah, better. It's a, you know, it's a group that can get frustrated easily. Uh, I saw that a little bit towards the tail end of the first half when we started to find ourselves down a little bit. We start to get a little bit overzealous, we start pushing a little bit too much, then the game gets opened up, we expose ourselves a little bit at times. So sometimes, you know, a little bit more patience, a little bit more um, <clears throat> playing the long game, as we say, instead of just rushing to try to get ourselves back in it and opening ourselves up. But at times we, you know, and I've said during the course of the year, we ride our, we ride our results heavy. And, you know, when we win, we're, we're really high. And when we lose, we get a little bit too low. And we're starting to find a little bit more stability and, and, uh, each of these results. The guys were disappointed that they didn't win tonight because it was at home in front of the crowd and fan appreciation. Uh, so it was a it was a muted celebration, I would say, in the locker room. Um, but I know they the guys who've been around for a while know how difficult it is just to get across that line, and now you start your momentum towards the next thing. Um, you uh, you go in that Houston game with the ability to clinch a uh, home berth for the first round, possibly as high as third. How, how are you guys approaching that as part of the narrative? Yeah, we we yeah, I just said to the guys like congratulations, but we we have to go to Houston like it's a playoff game because sometimes I think in this league there's a tendency for teams to make it to the playoffs and then they come they foot comes off the gas a little bit. There's a little bit of a relaxation. I saw it from firsthand from our team in Toronto. Back in 2016, when it was the first time in club history for, and we got into the finals, and then we were terrible the next three games, and we're out just like that, right? So we have to keep the mentality of the next game is just important, and because we're playing for a home game, I think guys will be very focused and and attentive to to details, and we'll go out with the right intensity and mentality because we do have a, an opportunity to host, and that would be huge to bring a playoff game back to to the stadium and to our fans. So I don't I don't see any problem with that, and then. Before you know it, you'll play off game one, we'll be here, and the intensity will be ratcheted up again. So there's no time for relaxation. We've got to we just keep going. You mentioned uh, some frustration and uh, missing the first penalty kick. Um, the third penalty kick, at first it's not called. you got to wait on VAR. Uh, and in the middle there, there was another one where they give Chicharito a yellow card, and as we're watching it, we all thought it was a clear penalty kick. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I was told from our guys who follow the replays up in the booth and tell us what's going on. We thought that was as well. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, at, at this point, uh, we scored the one at the end that we needed to score to at least get us across the line. I don't even know what to say about it anymore. Uh, but Douglas stepped up in a critical moment and, and buried it. Uh, and that gave us a little bit of momentum. You know, there was a number of chances for us to get the second or third, and we obviously didn't get those, which then led to uh, um, an interesting finish for us, which Bondi, Bondi pulled it out for us, a uh, big save there at the end.
And then lastly, um, for me, uh, Raheem, what, what situation? He, you could see he was getting checked. It looked like his knee. Yeah, it was. Uh, I can't. I couldn't tell exactly. But what he kind of said is he took a knock uh, somewhere in the soleus or something, and it just started to tighten up on him, and he he couldn't really move anymore. He didn't feel like the freedom to be able to run and to change direction and all that kind of stuff. So it, I don't. It wasn't a pull. It wasn't anything that we think would be significant. It's more of just. A, Probably a nuisance that just locked up on him for today, and hopefully we'll get him get him through that for the next couple of days. Greg, I know your message all season long has been, you know, playing to remember or to give fans a moment that they remember and mm -hmm. how to make them feel something special. And tonight, for what it's worth, I know there's more work to be done, but you gave fans a moment. I guess for you personally, how did that make you feel? Good. I'm. Uh... Like, like I said, I'm really proud of our guys, and I'm happy that tonight we leave our fans with something to be excited about. That They showed up in such numbers and with such support, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> it would have – it was important that we leave tonight with that playoff spot. That was huge. Uh, that's what they've been waiting for for a number of years. I know they got one not too long ago, but it's been a while since it's been, been – since they feel that. So really, really excited about that. I, honestly, I wanted us – to win the game and I wanted everybody to feel really good when they left the stadium and our guys to feel really good. Um, and I know that's was the mindset of our group was let's win this game and let's put ourselves in a real position to host. And so we still have a chance and we did what we needed to do. But um, so I can't be too greedy, I guess. We got ourselves into there and we given ourselves a chance to, to lift a trophy. And we're playing as well as anyone, in my opinion. If we can finish and we can do the little things in the game, I thought tonight we were a little stretched out and a little overzealous, really eager to try to to get after them. And I think that opened us up a little bit on the defensive side and it led to a little more of an open game than it needed to be. Um, so just tightening up a few things, but I think the where our group has been over the last you know month or so, uh, I think we're we're ready for anyone that we can that we play against. Greg, it, it looked like it was a pretty physical game tonight, too, uh, whether that was officiating or, or anything else. What did RSL do in the middle of the field that sort of seemed to cause you guys problems, at least maybe in the first half? Yeah, they were they were really compact. You know, they were really compact, lots of numbers through the middle of the field. Uh, you know, at times, even in the first half, we're trying to force too many of our combinations through the middle of the field, and we needed to move some numbers to the outsides and try to build some of our attacks off the outsides. But we tend to then funnel ourselves back towards the middle tonight a little bit too much. And that plays into their hands, which is a game of transition. Um, so they certainly just they clogged things up on us, made it difficult. Like I said, they were compact front to back. They were compact uh, getting their guys wide inside. And so, um, yeah, there, we, were, we were sometimes forcing it into the mix a little bit. And then I felt like after some of our attacks, even if we finished attacks, then we were starting too high defensively, and but we weren't really getting pressure, and so it was too easy for them to get in between us, and then they were running guys out, and then it's behind us, and so I feel like we were. That's that emotion side, like we were overzealous to like go win the game, you know. And I think if we score the penalty, the first penalty, I think we settle in a little bit more. We stay a little bit more compact. We have something to defend. Uh, I felt like we were chasing a little bit more than we than we would normally or have been lately, and we just need to settle in a little bit on, on something like that. And I think that's a part of the environment, big crowd, big day, and I felt like we just got a little bit uh, maybe stretched out more than we than we should have. Greg, is the suit something you wear on playoff clinching days? Well, I've been wearing it for a few weeks now. As the weather starts to turn and it gets cold, cooler, not cold because it's we're in California, but as it starts to get cooler, I think, you know, when you get to September, October, you start to get a little bit cool in the air. To me, that's when playoff time is coming around and we try to step it up a little bit. It's more business. So we've been pretty consistent here over the last few games of stretch. Yeah. Greg, earlier this year when you guys were looking for new acquisitions, you kind of mentioned how sometimes it's difficult to bring in players middle of the season. It kind of, you know, disrupts a little bit of the flow depending on, you know, how that goes. When you see players like Ricky being so, you know, consistent in, in the game, you see somebody like Martin that gives you guys a lot of more security in the back sure. line. Um, how has that transition been for you guys? Have you seen it, um, I guess, kind of exude on other players or as a collective? How have those guys kind of come in and acclimated themselves in, into the larger collective? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Ricky, Gaston, Mar Martin. Uh, for me, every time Martin plays, it looks like it's his, like, 10,000th game. It's, like, so controlled and and... 
Uh, it's like he's seen everything before, and so it's it doesn't matter where he is, what stadium is, where it is. He's like he's seen it all before, and he's just very calm and dealing with things. Gaston the same. I think he's he's adapted well, smart, and part of it is because the game is played in their head before it is anywhere else, and they're they're smart players who have played at a really high level and and have adapted quickly to their teammates. I think the way we play also helps them because we play, we want to have the ball, we try to play in a way that that they're used to playing and it suits them. Uh, but certainly, you know, with Ricky in particular, just his energy and um, his legs, his, he's, he also has this desire to get out and to press and to close things down and to pick up the ball and run at, at speed. Uh, we were trying to get him a little bit higher to, to receive the ball higher between the lines and not dropping so low because I felt like there was some opportunity for him uh, if he was a little bit higher. But he wants to get on the ball. He wants to influence the game. These things are these are important. This is the role that we want him in. So, but sometimes I think he needs to be more patient and let us get him the ball in better places than sometimes coming and seeking the ball. But he's looking to make a difference, so uh, you can't fault him for that. But these these guys, they're they're high level players who um, who I think are are big time pros who've stepped into our locker room and into our team and into this league and and have taken it with the right mentality. They came here to help the team win. They came here to play at their best level, and they've been able to find that pretty quickly because of that. Uh, Greg, I know I know you've been known for uh, you know wearing the scarf back in the days. I know it's kind of hot out here, so <laughs> any any chance we see that? And um, the second one, I know there in the, the final minutes there, Kevin Cabral had an opportunity to just went off the crossbar, and then Jonathan Bond makes an incredible save. What were you going? What were your emotions like in that in, the, in those final minutes? Yeah, I was riding it a little bit emotionally. I mean, uh, we had two or three chances. I felt Kevin, again, had, a, uh, you know, two or three chances to maybe separate us a little bit, give us the lead, which gives us, uh, you know, maybe a cushion to get in the playoffs, but also the opportunity to win the game. Uh, I was really hoping the one that hit the post went in because that, that would have given the kid a little bit of confidence maybe going into the playoffs. But after that, I felt like, again, he was decelerating and chances and opportunities when he needed to accelerate and, and finish and just go for it. I felt like, again, he's overthinking it and slowing down too much. But um, those goals would have helped us out. Um, then I felt like we were just, we were a little, we were a little stretched out, you know, with Vic out there and Sash, the key, you know, especially Vic. The key is we wanted to finish the game in possession a little bit more. That's the reason you would have someone like Vic to help us to keep the keep possession. But we were in like these fast counterattacks and then they were coming right back at us and then these fast counterattacks and they were coming back at us. And so we had some holes a little bit on the, on, uh, on the outsides, on the right side, in between our lines, again, being stretched out. And then they were just whipping balls across, uh, the, across the face of our goal. And um, you need your center backs, you need your defenders to win those. Um, and we didn't and Bondi came out and took one, but then he had to make an incredible save on one and, and glad fortunately for us missed another one. So there was, there was two or three moments that were hairy there at the end that um, we need to close out better. A little bit of it is on me, putting, getting the right guys uh, to close the game out, and and we didn't have the ball, so it was it was a little bit uh, we were a little off it in, in the end in terms of making it clear closing it out. We were a little stretched out, which is a little bit on me as well. So the scarf, it's got to cool off a little bit. I, I just can't wear it wear it if it's going to be still 75 degrees outside. But uh, so we'll see as these games come up where we're at. And if it's cool enough here, I'll, I'll bring something out again. Hey, Greg, one final one. Um, as you prepare for the playoffs, um, there's a chance that you never know a game might come down to penalty kicks. Do you yeah. have a five in your mind that you think that can step up and confidently take them? You guys have struggled on them. Um, I think you're nine of, nine of 14 so far this season. Yeah, I mean, I have in my head guys that I think are ready to take them. It, once you get a little closer to that, you can adjust sometimes your lineup and get certain guys on the field that maybe you would prefer to take them. But uh, I will be ready if that if if when that moment uh, comes in our future here in the next couple of weeks potentially or thereafter. Um, I know we have guys that can hit them. I, I think. Uh, yeah, I think some of it is over. We're overthinking it a little bit, and we just we guys need to step up. But I thought Douglas stepped up with confidence. We've got other guys that can do that as well. So, uh, just a, a follow to that. Do you, in your experience, um, does practicing penalty kicks does that help in any way, or is the situation just so diff different that the you know the no, pressure? I mean, is I mean, there. practicing them is it's useful and that you have a routine and that you have something that you can, uh, that you can always fall back on that maybe you're confident about. I think hitting, being able to hit both sides is important. To, uh, 
being able to have you know a little bit of disguise in what you do is important. So these are things that you can work on to create a routine because anytime you go into a big situation or big scenario, you want to have some kind of a routine that you are falling back on that that is kind of muscle memory in some way, shape, or form. You don't want it just to to be a random step up and try to hit the goal. So yeah, some of it's that. But then once you get in the game, there's that you add other you other other things into it like the emotion of the situation. There's other things that you can't really duplicate totally uh, on the training field, but you certainly can. Like I said, you certainly can create some muscle memory and and a, and a routine that you feel comfortable with and confident in. Good. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.